Lay slow down. There was a stall westbound over by the prospect that's been cleared away. Rosanna and Bianca, back to you. Hi, Inez. Thank you so much. So, New York City is urging you to resume wearing a mask indoors regardless of vaccination status. Now, this is all coming amid growing concern that the recently discovered Omicron variant is likely to be discovered in our area soon. It has already been found across the New York State border in Ontario, Canada. Joining us this morning, New York City Health Commissioner, Dr. Dave Choksi. Nice to have you back on Good Day. Thank you so much. Good morning and happy holidays. You too. So do we know, is the variant here? Uh, no, we have not detected the Omicron variant here in New York City as yet, but I am expecting that we will in the coming days. But right now, almost all of our sequenced uh, cases are of the Delta variant. All right, so explain to me, doctor. I, it seems like everybody's getting very, like, worried about this. Uh, the CDC's talking about possible new regulations. Uh, obviously, you're urging everybody to wear a mask indoors, regardless of vaccination. And yet, South Africa is saying that they're seeing mild symptoms. What's going on? Yeah, look, it's natural to have some anxiety, you know, when you hear about these reports. Um, and I certainly feel a lot of humility, given what we've been through over the last two years. But there's a Marie Curie quote that comes to mind. Uh, Nothing is to be feared. It is only to be understood. And we're still very early in our process of understanding this new variant and what it means in terms of its speed of spread or whether it will escape the immune system. Um, so I would take all of these early reports with a big grain of salt, but we should prepare. We should do the things that we know will help to curb the spread of the virus, even you know with Delta. Um, and that's why I issued a uh, commissioner's advisory to um, ensure that people are using their masks, particularly in public indoor settings, and also doing the other things that we know work, like vaccination and testing. So, doctor, are you saying that you don't necessarily believe the doctors in South Africa with them saying that there are mild symptoms? Because I'm just, I'm trying to figure this out. Yeah, this is a really important question, and we are getting very good information. I'm so grateful to the South African scientists and doctors. But look, these, these things take a little bit of time to really piece together and unravel. Um, we don't know yet if the reports from South Africa are because it's younger uh, patients who are um, getting diagnosed with COVID-19, and the milder illness is actually related to the fact that it's a younger and healthier population. Um, we know that hospitalizations and deaths lag cases, so it'll just take a little bit more time to piece together this puzzle. So about how much time do you think it'll take before you guys can say, hey, this is not, we're not just taking this information with a grain of salt. This is actually, you know, substantial information that we can base uh, different rules and regulations on because this was discovered November 25th. That's about a week ago. And that was discovered again, like you said, because this variant was a lot more mild than any other variant. So can you give us maybe a timeline about when you can say, all right, this, this information is, is solid and we can make decisions based on it? Yes. Um, well, we're evaluating it uh, each and every day. And you will see, you know, some new findings uh, crop up within the next few days. But I think it'll take uh, about another week and a half for us to have more definitive information on the three most important questions. Number one, how transmissible uh, is this new variant? Meaning, how does it spread, particularly compared to the Delta variant? Number two, does it cause more severe disease or, as is possible, less severe disease? And number three, um, what does it mean for our immunity, the immunity that we've built up through vaccination or for people who have had prior infection? And speaking about those vaccines, say that this variant does remain um, consistent with the South African doctor's findings, that it is uh, much more mild. Would these vaccine companies have to change their vaccines in order to uh, work with a variant that's less severe? Um, they are preparing for that. So uh, both Pfizer and Moderna um, and a few other vaccine makers are uh, retooling their vaccines uh, specifically for the Omicron variant. But right now, that's a backstop. That's a just-in-case. Mm. Um, what will be most important in the next couple of weeks is to understand how the existing vaccines and the immunity of people who have already been vaccinated will hold up against the variant. But there's one important thing that I want to emphasize for your viewers, which is um, if you haven't gotten vaccinated yet, this is a single important step that you can take today. 
It includes um, children aged 5 to 11 who just recently became eligible for vaccination, as you know. And I'm also encouraging boosters for uh, all adults, um, as long as you're in the right time frame uh, to get your booster dose. Um, doctor, on another subject, since we have you here, the city is opening up supervised injection sites for opioid addicts. Now, I know two were open yesterday. The New York Post is reporting that there were five overdoses in one of them. Can you confirm that? Um, I can't confirm that specific number, but what I can tell you is that overdose prevention centers save lives. Um, they do it uh, by taking care of people in a clean, uh, supervised, you know, hygienic setting. And we do expect that they will be able to reverse overdoses and save lives. Yeah, I do have no. to ask, though, I mean, but, but treatment, prevention treatment saves lives as well. So why not focus money into that rather than allowing this to be almost more of a safe haven for people to use? That's an important question. But remember, it's not an either or. Um, and the reason that we call them overdose prevention centers is that uh, it's not just about, um, you know, providing a safe place for people who use drugs. It's about connecting them to that care and treatment, which is located in the very same facilities, um, which also have wraparound services like social services, which help uh, people navigate to uh, the right uh, care and services that they need to enter into recovery. Do you think the city is going to legalize heroin? I mean, is that the next step? Um, I, I can't uh, speak to that, uh, you know, and what I can tell you is that Overdose prevention centers are part of a broader harm reduction approach, which we've seen work uh, across the world. Um, there are now over 100 overdose prevention centers across three continents. We have 30 years of research from other countries showing that this does work. Uh, and so I'm proud that New York City has taken this important step. New York City Health Commissioner Dr. Dave Choksi, always great to talk to you. Thank you so much. Hey, what are you going to do in January? Are you staying on? Uh, thanks for asking. Well, what, you know, what I can tell you is that I'm really committed to our COVID response uh, and also a very seamless transition uh, between the mayoral administration. So New York City can count on me to, to do what's needed. Glad to hear it. All right. Thank you so much for chatting with us this morning. Thank you for having me as always.